It's a bit strange that a major news organization would slip into saying exactly what a person had asked themselves to be described as simply because <laughs> sounds, they had asked for it. Sounds like respect to me. It's not nothing same, more, nothing less. It's not the same thing as respect because it's something which we haven't had out. He himself said, I don't know what it means to be non-binary. So, so my suggestion was he should go away and think about it. And in the meantime, we shouldn't all mutilate the language to fit Why? around him. Why? Why? Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we are going to be checking out a video where Douglas Murray school a trans activist on political correctness and woke culture. Wow. I believe this is going to be an interesting one. Let's check it out. Go. You are about to watch one of the most heated debates between Douglas Murray and a woke politician. The debate is around political correctness and the use of gender pronouns. Douglas Murray did not hold back. Watch. What comes across to me is whether the struggle for rights, be they gay or gender, LGBT, whether the battle has been won or not, because many feel that they need to keep shouting, pushing with language because they feel, uh, for example, there is not equality in whatever sphere it is uh, that we might want to talk about. So that could be gay rights, that could be women's rights, that could be racial justice. How do you feel, uh, Douglas, when we talk about that? Do you feel, because when I read your book, it, it came across to me that you feel a lot of the battles were almost won. Well, I, I do. I use this analogy that in, 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 in many of these areas, it's been my experience in my adult life that, it, that it, it's looked like watching a train reaching the desired destination, that is, at, at the station of equality. And as it draws in, suddenly getting ahead of steam, shooting off down the tracks, off the tracks, and scattering people in its wake. Um, what I mean by that is the, the weaponization of things at the stage at which they've never got better, where they're presented as if they've never been worse. And I just, I just urge people to, to take their foot off that pedal a little bit. That isn't to say don't keep moving, but but don't lean on heuristics you've come to very recently this hard. Sylvana, what would you respond? Well, I always think it's um, necessary to really understand that even though my emancipation uh, uh, has reached a certain level where I can say that I now have certain privileges, it doesn't mean to say that that goes for everybody who is part of, um, let's say, um, that particular uh, group that's identifying uh, within a certain scope. So let's make it more concrete and say that it's fine if you're a female exec, like, like myself for instance, I'm a female party leader. Um, so it's easy for me to say that ah, that's doable, that's possible. If I can do it, anybody can do it. But the fact of the matter is that a lot of young women who look like me do not have the same privileges and are still fighting so many battles that maybe I've overcome because of, Lord knows why, could be just my, um, my dominant character. Um, but it's not to say that they don't, that they have the same opportunities and the same privileges. So they still have a long way to go. And I know from experience that it's important for them to have role models and people that speak out on their behalf. Notice that smile from Douglas Murray because that says it all. Douglas Murray almost wants to laugh because her arguments are just honestly laughable to say the least. She herself acknowledges that she has been able to overcome some of the challenges that might come because of being a black woman through hard work and developing a strong character, yet she still chooses to hold on to the victim narrative. More than ever, we all have access to the same opportunities, particularly in the West, and anyone with an able mind and body can work hard and develop strong character to get to where she is in society. Well, let me pass it back to Douglas then. Do you feel you can always speak as freely as you I, want to? I, I, myself, yes. Um, I think that I'm in a, as it were, a very privileged position. I know this from uh, audiences and readers uh, who are in touch with me, that increasingly the things I describe which cause, have caused career destruction for very eminent people. I mean, thinking of 
things like the Nobel Prize winning scientist Tim Hunt, who made this one joke at a conference in Korea, and by the time he'd landed in London, he lost every job he had. Um, I'm saying this happened to, has happened to very prominent people. They've either said something that's not that popular anymore or said something off color, or, and so on and so forth. But my point is that all of that stuff trickles down to the workplace. And what I'm struck by now is the extent to which people who are, are not self-employed journalists and writers feel that they can't say the things that, other, that some people in public can say. So, for instance, let me give one very quick example. I did this on the BBC the other week, that this issue came up with this pop singer, Sam Smith, who described himself as non-binary. And I got into a certain amount of trouble that didn't bother me, but uh, because I said I don't think there's any such thing, or at least no one's explained what it is sufficiently for me to agree to it. Now, I know, I know from feedback, including feedback in the studio from certain people at the BBC, that yeah. this is not an unpopular thing to say. I would think that if you went out to the general public and said, do you think there are people who are non-binary, and if so, can you say what they are? You'd get an, a fragment of 1% of people able to say that. And so, and so my point on that is not that I've closed the argument on that, but we haven't had the argument on a whole set of things, and it seems only to be a few people who do have a voice in public who can have it. Silvana, you want to? You're nodding your head, not yeah, in agreement. Because I'm always um, surprised that certain people feel that they need to give their okay for other people to be or think something they don't necessarily understand. It doesn't matter whether I understand the beauty of um, uh, physical love between two men. There's no point. You don't need my permission no. to, to, to feel and act. So why does Sam Smith or anybody else who considers himself non-binary need, needs um, uh, uh, permission from whoever. All, all that is up to us is to say, if this is important to you and it does not affect me in any type of way, in any type of negative way, I'm going to respect that. So if you say that you're offended by blackface every year, then I don't need to understand how come you're offended? All I need to do is say, this is not my intention. How can I um, 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 fix it? And if you say you can fix it by stop acting that way, then that's what I'll do because there is no point. People don't need your permission to be whoever they want to be. Um, can I Douglas Murray is about to completely obliterate her arguments in the next section, but it's clear that this woman does not even understand the argument that Douglas Murray is laying out in this debate. If you decide to go on national television and demand that I alter my language and address you a certain way, then your personal choice is obviously affecting me. If you want to do something to your own body, that is your choice. But if you now want to promote it to children and demand that we redefine how we use language, that is a completely different matter. I, I think it's slightly more complex than that, if I can say so. Let me give one, one reason why. Actually, the Sam Smith thing was significant. Again, sorry to go on about the BBC. The BBC's uh, uh, reporting of that immediately did what he asked, which was that they changed the pronouns. And some people think this isn't a big thing. Some of us do get a bit stuck on this. I might just, I'm only inter interrupt you just so everybody sure. is up to but speed with the sense of instead of uh, he, she, him, her, uh, non-binary people often want to use they, them. So it would be... Uh, so my, my point was simply that if you haven't actually had this out in public, you haven't actually discussed much of it, it's a bit strange that a major news organisation would slip into saying exactly what a person had asked themselves to be described <laughs> as simply because sounds, they had asked for it. Sounds like respect to me. It's not Nothing same, more, nothing less. It's not the same thing as respect because it's something which we haven't had out. He himself said, I don't know what it means to be non-binary. So, so my suggestion was, he should go away and think about it. And in the meantime, we shouldn't all mutilate the language to fit Why? around him. Why? Why? If I come on this stage and I say to you, I would prefer for you to call me Mr. Simons. Why is it a problem to you to just give me that respect? But well, well, I'm, I'm afraid that because I care about the language, I didn't particularly want to say they was very good in their performance last night. 
Well, the, I'm not going to do it simply because of the... Now, but, no, sorry, can but I, could, don't, there is a more important thing, if I yes, may say so. Sure, which I, is that actually, this one is a very niche bit of a thing. Whether a pop star thinks they're non-binary or genderqueer or, or whatever, person. is not that significant. Now, there is one that's very significant, which we're all tripping over now, which is the trans one. And you mentioned the thing about the phobia there. There is a real problem in our societies on this one, because actually, in the media, people are petrified now of writing about this issue but outside there in the country as you can see from a new poll that's about to come out tomorrow the general public are deeply concerned about being dismissed as transphobes when you're talking about how you deal with children and that isn't a small concern it's 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 not just about pronouns it's a legitimate concern of the general public about the well-being of children I'm bothered when people make assertions which we haven't litigated in public yet. And on a whole set of issues at the moment, it, look, the, the way I see it is, it is, I'm sure you're all people who've seen sheepdogs in operation, um, but if you see a sheepdog trying to get a herd of sheep, it doesn't need to go and force them into a corner. It goes and it not even nips, but pretends to nip around the edges. And that way you can make everyone move like this. There is a, there is a real and significant risk in our society with the free press at the moment that people coming and making very slight nips around the edges make the whole herd move in another direction. And that is exactly what's but happened with what this. What are you worried about will be the end result? I'm worried that we, we, we tell little lies and we get used to little lies and then we tell bigger ones. I think, there's a, I think it's a lie to pretend that biology doesn't matter. I think it's unwise to pass those things through always simply because of courtesy. Courtesy, I happen to agree, is one of the bedrocks of society. It's very important to be courteous, but that's not... Courtesy has a limit, and the limit I didn't, is I didn't when use the it word makes courtesy. people... I use the word respect, and sure. there's a big difference between courtesy and respect. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what you have just seen is what happens when truth is sacrificed on the altar of ideology. The woman is not even willing to listen to Douglas Murray's arguments. You can see by her posture and the way she is sitting down that she is not listening. Douglas Murray's concerns extend beyond linguistic shifts to broader societal consequences. He suggests that the rapid evolution of language norms reflects a broader cultural trend towards relativism, where subjective truths hold sway over objective reality. This trend, Murray argues, undermines the foundation of rational discourse and collective understanding, leading to confusion and division within society. Murray's stance finds support in the broader debate surrounding the relationship between language, identity, and truth. Critics of compelled speech argue that coercing individuals to adopt certain language norms infringes upon freedom of expression and stifles meaningful dialogue. They contend that genuine respect for individuals involves engaging in honest and open conversations rather than blindly adhering to prescribed language rules. Furthermore, Murray's perspective resonates with those who advocate for intellectual integrity and critical thinking. They argue that societal progress should be grounded in rational inquiry and empirical evidence rather than ideological conformity. By encouraging skepticism and thoughtful reflection, Murray contends that society can avoid falling prey to the pitfalls of unchecked linguistic and cultural relativism. Oh, wow. What an interesting interaction. What an interesting debate. We can all tell that uh, the lady in question, she's not uh, intellectually honest to some extent. You can't just come and say, we are here as a result, uh, biological, uh, biology don't exist, biological reality don't exist. I feel that is totally unacceptable. We all believe, we all know that according to biology, you are either a male or female, and you can't change your sex. You are either born uh, uh, with the X chromosome or with the Y chromosome. You can't come and just change it overnight and expect people to address you uh, with whatever you have called yourself. I see, I see that as totally unacceptable. Just like the example that she gave that uh, if she wants to be addressed as Mr., that she see no problem uh, with her being addressed as Mr. And believe me, you can decide to classify yourself with whatever you want to classify yourself as. But you can't force people to accept what you want to classify yourself as. I'm seeing a miss in front of me and you are and you want me to address you as a mister. Sorry, I'm not going to do that. I'm only going to do that based on what I'm seeing in front of me. And this is what uh, Douglas always talk about that 
instead of that we shouldn't feel pity for these people instead of us trying to uh reason with them instead of us trying to feel pity with them we should try to uh, liberate them by telling them the truth. A lot of those people are, 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 are suffering from mental delusion because what they perceive to be truth is not actually the truth. And we can all tell right now that uh, in the world we live right now, in the society we live right now, it's very difficult to be a woman. It's also very difficult to, uh, to bring up a child. You see, bringing up a child in this society we are right now, the child can easily be influenced about... Uh, about all this gender talk, all this trans talk going on in the society, it's very difficult to bring up a child in this era. And the other time, I was listening to uh, Piers Morgan while uh, he was interviewing some lady, uh, uh, and he made a mention of some issue uh, uh, in a, situ a situation whereby in a school, the, the, the student who was talking to her uh, was telling the teacher that there are only two genders, and the teachers... And the teacher was trying to uh, indoctrinate the child by telling the child that uh, they they are more than two gender, which I believe that is totally that is totally wrong. It's the same thing I'm seeing in in this debate. People want to be I uh, want to force people. They want to force people to address them by what they want. And I feel that is totally wrong. That is totally unacceptable. I'm not against you being what you want to be. If you want to be a, a dog. You can be a dog. If you want to be a cat, you can be a cat. If you want to be a female, you can be a female. Whatever you want to uh, identify yourself as, I don't have a problem with that. I have a problem when you start forcing people to address you with what they know you are not. I think that is a big problem Douglas is trying to address. Is Douglas is trying to address in this video. And you have your own freedom of speech. I respect that. You have your own freedom of expression. I, I, I respect that. But you should also respect other people's freedom of speech. You should also respect other people's freedom of expression. You shouldn't force people to accept what they know is not true. And I believe that is what she's doing in this video. And I feel that is totally unacceptable. And a lot of those people, like I said, they are suffering from mental delusion because what they perceive to be truth is not actually the truth. Instead of us trying to reason with them, I believe we should liberate them by telling them the truth, which is what Douglas is doing in this video. And i also like to hear your comments based on the facts Douglas have stated in this video. Let's get the conversation rolling. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day. Thank you.